Hi, this is DIY Homebrew. My name is Jay, and today we're going to discuss what beer gravity is. Now, beer gravity is not how fast it goes from here to here, but it is the measurement of how much alcohol is in your beer, sort of. Okay, so let's say we start out with our wort, and the wort has all the fermentables in it that you would normally have. It's got a nice high sugar level, and let's just call that level 50. And we'll use a scale of 1 to 50. 1 being the least amount of sugar, or 0, no sugar, and 50 being the normal amount of top level sugar for yeast to eat. Now, if we want to take a measurement of how much sugar is at the beginning of the brew, well that would be ideal because if we only took it at the bottom, that tells us that tells us if the yeast have done their job and there's less sugar, yeah, but it's it's better to know the first level, okay? And the difference between the top level, say 50, and then when we measure it again after two weeks, say it's down to 12, that would tell us, just by how much sugar is missing, that would tell us how much the yeast have eaten, and through a calculation that's rather difficult and no one wants to get into, would tell us how much alcohol is there, or at least a very good approximation of how much alcohol. So, beer gravity is basically that, measuring the starting sugar and the final sugar in the process. You can use two tools, one is called a hydrometer and the other is called a refractometer to do this. There's a big argument in the brewing community whether the refractometer is that accurate. I will say that a hydrometer also needs calibration. We'll leave it at that for now. But basically, these two tools can let you measure the sugar content in anything. You could measure the sugar content in your orange juice or your Kool-Aid or your apple juice or anything. In fact, you could probably use those uh, items to calibrate your hydrometer or refractometer. The, the idea being that mass-produced juices, what I have found, mass-produced juices tend to be very uniform because the companies that make them don't want to put more sugar in than necessary, they want the item to be consistent. So I've actually used this along with distilled water to, to calibrate my hydrometer. This gives me, or my refractometer because that's what I prefer, but to use this uh, these items to figure out if my tool, my device, is accurate. I use those juices to do that. I find that they're highly accurate. Um, the, the best thing you can do is to understand that knowing that you have enough sugar to start, which if you follow your given recipe that you're likely going to start with, you will, and that you have enough yeast which, if you're starting in a two or three gallon recipe, you guarantee will have enough yeast. And even in a five gallon batch, you will almost certainly have enough yeast in one packet that unless you're doing something more extraordinary than a usual recipe, you'll only have to do one pack. Anyway, start with enough sugar, have enough yeast, end with enough sugar. Beer is bitter, beer is low in sugar, um, beer doesn't taste sweet. If you're not going to use a measuring device after two weeks, which is why it's really important when you start to wait two weeks, as we discussed last time. Anyway, when you're measuring that final outcome, you'll know that there's a low enough amount of sugar in there, that bottling your beer is also safe, and that you're not going to uh, continue to ferment within the bottles and create those bottle bombs we discussed before or that we're going to have to worry about uh, beer just sort of exploding out of the lid when we untwist it like it's a shaken up pop. Uh, so, with that in mind, that is what beer gravity essentially is. There are a lot of calculators online. You should definitely Google some websites. I think uh, Northern Brewer has a really good one that can help you start out, but it can look really daunting, really um, hard to understand your first time looking at, at these calculators to help you figure out what your alcohol volume is for your beer. 
I say don't chase high alcohol, chase good and uh, high flavor. And the alcohol will come just because it's a byproduct. Um, uh, unless you're looking to create a very specific recreation of a, of a beer that you really like, then don't worry about it too much. Uh, people who use hydrometers and refractometers are really doing it to make uh, clones of their favorite beers, which is awesome. Personally, I like to just see how the beer turns out, see what I can create, and know that it's fermented safely. So that's primarily using the two-week method, uh, or a little more, and we can discuss that later. And I use my refractometer to make sure that the sugar is consumed. Uh, beyond that, we will discuss more about hydrometers and refractometers, their plus and minuses, in a future video. In the meantime, like, share, subscribe, and as always, DIY Homebrew. My name is Jay. Have a great one.